Hello, everyone. Happy Advent to all of you. As we continue our Advent journey this weekend, we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent, also infamously called Gaudete Sunday. Gaudete comes from the Latin word rejoice. We are called to rejoice because the Lord is very near. And as an expression of that, we have a special candle that is rose-colored. And so I would like to light this candle from our Easter candle once again. As I was preparing for today's meditation, I reviewed some of the history of the season of Advent. As early as the 800s, the season of Advent was already in the making. St. Gregory the Great in the 900s brought prayers into the Mass officially to help people celebrate this liturgical season. The word Gaudete comes from the opening antiphon in Latin, and the antiphon is Gaudete in Domino Semper, Iterum Dico Gaudete, Dominus enim prope est. This means rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Indeed, the Lord is near. And this comes from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. On this Sunday, we're not even invited. We are commanded to rejoice. The Lord is about to arrive. And this special Sunday marks a midpoint, so to speak, in our Advent journey, which is penitential in nature. Historically, it gave a little reprieve from the intense prayer and fasting many would do. We remember that the church saw Advent as a mini Lent, which had to do with prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. In Lent, we may recall that there is also a special Sunday that marks the halfway point. It's called Laetare Sunday. And for centuries already, priests wore rose-colored vestments on these Sundays of Advent and Lent, marking the midway point. We are to rejoice this Sunday. It also gives us the focus of the third week in Advent, joy. Joy, along with love, perhaps is the most attractive quality that we witness in the lives of the saints and in the people we are touched by most. When we are in touch with authentic joy, we know that we are in the presence of something and someone very special and who is in touch with a reality that is beyond this world. It is something that cannot be faked. It is something that we all want in our own lives. I think back to some of the people that I encountered in my own life that exuded great joy, several people to come to mind. My grandfather was one of them. He was a hard, work hard, play hard kind of guy, well respected in my hometown, and his larger than life persona really attracted people to him. I think of my encounter with Mary Jo Copeland who I visited in Minneapolis, she started sharing and carrying hands next to Target Stadium. And her joy and passion for life was so inspiring that she would spend her entire day caring for the poor of Minneapolis in her soup kitchen and facility. I think of St. Mother Teresa Sisters of Charity in Rome who cared for the poorest of the poor in Rome. When I went to help them, they exuded joy as they chopped up vegetables and cooked dinner gave people off the street showers, and cared for people in bed. And I think of the joy that I experienced when I visited the poor Claires in Sauk Rapids. And I remember even bringing high school students as a field trip and how they were so struck by their joy and happiness, especially when they found out their way of life and how much prayer, penance was a focus in their lives. But even today, I was reminded by a particular Catholic school teacher that works at Mary Lord's School who exceeds great joy. And of course, I know she's not doing it for the money, but she, that she has that great joy. Joy is meant to be for all of us who are living in the Holy Spirit. A holy priest once told me that joy is, in, is the infallible sign of the Holy Spirit. Joy is a gift of the Holy Spirit that we can all ask for. There are many examples of joy in the Bible. We have the joy of the angel Gabriel when he appears to Mary and says, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. 
When Mary visits Elizabeth, St. John the Baptist leaps for joy in Elizabeth's womb. Mary expresses her joy with her Magnificat when she acknowledges how God made her the mother of the incarnate word. St. John the Baptist says at the very beginning of his preaching career, the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, the joy of mine is now full. Jesus says, these things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. It says in John's Gospel that the disciples rejoiced at the resurrection of Jesus, and in the Acts of the Apostles, they rejoiced even in persecution. One may ask, how do we grow in joy? Pope Francis gives us many insights on this. In his encyclical, The Joy of the Gospel, he points out that we grow in joy when we have a real encounter with Christ. In fact, in the encyclical, he invites all Christians to a renewed personal encounter of Jesus daily. And when we encounter Jesus, what can happen is that we have a real experience of accepting salvation in our own lives, which means, quote, being set free from sin, sorrow, inner emptiness, and loneliness, end quote. We do this powerfully when we go to the Sacrament of Reconciliation, or going to the Mass, or doing Eucharistic adoration, or even helping the poor. The Holy Father goes on to say that joy is the result of an interior life that discovers the meaning purpose of life. It's also our encounter with the other. Pope Francis also warns against that which chokes the life of joy. He mentions in his encyclical the danger of consumerism that flows from a covetous heart that focuses on frivolous pleasures of life and leads to a, a blunted conscience. He mentions that it is the encounter with God's love which leads to, which leads to friendship and liberates us from narrowness and self-absorption. He says, quote, life grows by being given away, and it weakens in isolation and comfort. Indeed, those who enjoy life most are those who leave security on the shore and become excited by the mission of communicating life with others, end quote. This reminds me of what Bishop Robert Barron once said, if you want joy, give joy to someone else. As Christians, we go against the grain when we have that temptation to want to consume and to try to snatch it for ourselves, we choose rather to give it away. And so we discover our lives. Jesus, after all, said, those who lose their life will find it. Also, what chokes against joy um, is spiritual complaining. I remember a quote from C.S. Lewis, and he talked about how there are two forms of spiritual complaining, or what we call murmuring in the desert, as the Israelites were often reported to do in the Old Testament. The first form of spiritual complaining or murmuring, um, one that would choke off the life of the Holy Spirit, is what C.S. Lewis called the eternal optimist. And how he explained that is, life would be better just right around the corner. These are people who think, oh, if only I had that new car, or if I only had that new iPhone, life is going to be better just around the corner. And yet their hearts are always restless. C.S. Lewis said the other form of spiritual complaining, or something that could really choke off the life of, of joy, is the life of a cynic. Life stinks, and then you die. Always looking at the glass half empty. Here are some ways in which we can lend our hearts to the Holy Spirit and allow it to fill us with joy. And this comes from the book that I read about In the School of the Holy Spirit by Jacques Philippe, a spiritual master. He mentions five things that we can do to be hospitable to the Holy Spirit. In fact, as I was thinking of this, we're in the season of hosting people and cooking, and when we think of cooking and food, we think of hospitality. And maybe when we are preparing our food or we are being hospitable towards family members and friends, we can think of the question of how we can be hospitable towards the Holy Spirit in our hearts. The first way is gratitude. Gratitude is the attitude 
biblically. We choose to focus on how we are being blessed by God now, and we give thanks to God. And as an extension of that gratitude, we pour out our lives for God and for one another. A second way that we can welcome the Holy Spirit and the joy in our lives is being present in the moment. We often can spend so much time and lose so much energy in worrying about the future or pondering the past. God's grace is in the present moment. And so for us to keep our custody of our thoughts and minds and heart in the present moment. A third way to welcome the Holy Spirit and the gift of joy is honestly fighting against our pride. For some of us, pride comes in the form of we think we're better than other people or we know better. Another form of pride that could be in us is we never seem to measure up. We always think that we need to be something more. In whatever form pride comes in our life, we can fight against pride and remind ourselves of how much we are loved by God for who we are and not to compare ourselves with others. Another way of welcoming the Holy Spirit is to make acts of trust. Throughout the day, we can be mindful of the fact that many things can trigger different thoughts and anxieties and worries in our lives. And when we find ourselves get, getting to that place, we can stop, choose to trust again in the Lord's will and continue our day. And, an, and a final way that we can welcome the Holy Spirit and joy in our lives is to do little things with great love. These are ways that we can welcome the Holy Spirit into our hearts and the gift of joy. What brings me joy is being a priest. I remember when I was almost a deacon and I was doing a retreat in Buffalo, uh, Minnesota at Christ the King House. And I remember Archbishop Harry Flynn said to us, if I had a hundred lives to live, I would live every one of them as a priest. And I, when I heard that, I was very struck by that and actually was very inspired by that. Here's a man who greatly loved his vocation and wouldn't trade it. And I certainly aspired to that, that at a certain point I would love my vocation so much that I can honestly say if I had a hundred lives, every one of them I would live um, as that vocation. And I can say honestly, when I became a pastor, I honestly know what he means. I love being a priest and I appreciate all the support that people give to me, but I would not trade it. And, um, and I think that's the fruit of us uh, seeking to do God's will, knowing that we are far from perfect and free from um, of worries and, and concerns. So today I, we are focusing on the gift of joy. And my prayer is that you're, that of joy, Christ's joy to be in all of you. And I would like to end this by simply saying a prayer to our Blessed Mother to help us with our joy. She was the one who embodied the Holy Spirit and was filled with joy, especially as she gave birth to her child. Mary Immaculate, we ask that you be with us during our Advent journey. We just celebrated your feast day mindful that through your Immaculate Conception, you became our mother in the order of grace. We ask that you would intercede for us, that your joy may also be our joy, especially with your coming into our heart and with the coming in, into our heart of your son, Jesus. Help us to be like you, better disciples and following the Lord in his will so that his joy may be in us. St. John the Baptist, pray for us. Happy Advent. God bless.